and Salad. Today, I will be performing my grade 4 speech and drama pieces. First, I would like to start with my poem. Have you ever met a monster? By Cat Howie. Have you ever met a monster? Just as darkness starts to fall. Stealing socks on Sundays. Swinging from your wall. Have you ever met a monster? When the sun was in the sky. On the hunt for chocolate. Playing frisbee with a pie. Have you ever met a monster? And your knees began to quiver. As her eyes gleam like tomatoes. And she throws you. In the river. Have you ever met a monster who seems friendly, warm, and nice? Scared of cardboard boxes, cricket balls, and mice? Have you ever met a monster eating humans? For his tea, crunching feet and earlobes, with his eyes on you and me. Well, the thing to do with monsters is even though they ask you to play, is to find the nearest exit and just run the other way. Now I will be going on to my prose passage. Grandpa's Great Escape by David Williams Behind them, Jack and his grandpa could hear another missile being launched. The old man turned the plane on its side and the rocket Skim past the Spitfire's belly. Boom! The second missile exploded right in front of the Spitfire's nose. Jack closed his eyes as the plane sped through the fire. You must do what they say! shouted the boy over the deafening noise of the explosion. I would rather die here, a hero. Then eat and live like a slave on the ground. But you must bail out though, squadron leader, shouted Grandpa over the noise. I am not leaving you, Grandpa! Grandpa! Suddenly the old man sounded confused. Yes, Grandpa! It's me, Jack, your grandson. You are my grandson? That's right, Jack asked the old man. For a moment, it seemed Grandpa was totally present in the here and now. Yes, Jack, my wonderful grandson, Jack. I can't let you get hurt. You must be out now. I don't want to leave you, cried the boy. But I must leave you. Please, Grandpa, I don't want you to die. I love you, Jack. I love you, Grandpa. As long as you love me, I can never die. With that, the old man turned the plane on its side, pulled back the canopy, and yanked on the boy's special cord. Up, up and away, said it to Grandpa, to his grandson, giving him one last salute. Now I will be 
going on to my play extract. My Strange Guinea Pig by Cat Howie. I think my guinea pig is an alien. Don't laugh. He gives me these really strange looks. Deep dark. We have not had it long. Really, not long at all. He came from the pet shop near the station. When we went to get him, the owner seemed really desperate to sell it to us. Like, he just couldn't wait to get him out of the shop. He kept saying, he's no trouble, no trouble at all. Now I've begun to wonder, was he frightened? Morty, I've called him Morty, can make things move. He moved a plant pot. Honestly, one minute it was in front of the cage and the next time I came out, no sign of it. Is he gathering plant pots or something? He's got this look. I think all his powers are in his eyeballs. Maybe if he concentrates, I think he can make people change what they're going to do. Maybe if a person was going back into the house, the eyes might fix on their back, lock on, and the person might just float down the garden. You are going to walk over there, the eyes say, or you are going to stand on one leg. Maybe if I brought him to school, could he make Miss Jenkins do things like run around the classroom, laugh, scream or cry out? The thing is, has he got a plan? I think this is just the beginning. I think some other guinea pigs are waiting in their cages for a signal. They are sending mind messages. Let's do it now. Now I will be doing some reading. The Enchanted Castle by Edith Nesbitt. None of the six human beings who saw the moon rising were ever able to think about it as having anything to do with time. Only for one instant could their moon ring have rested full on the center of that stone. And yet, there was time for many happenings. From that height, one could see far out over the quiet park and the sleeping gardens. And through the grey green of them, shapes moved, approaching. The great beasts came first, strange forms that were when the world was new. Gigantic lizards with wings, mammoths, strange vast birds. They crawled up the hill and ranged themselves outside the serpent. Then not from the garden, but from very far away, came the stone gods of Egypt. Bull-bodied, bird-winged, hawk-headed, cat-headed, all in stone and all alive and alert. Strange, grossic figures from the towers of cathedrals. Figures of angels with folded wings. Figures of beasts with wings widespread. Phoenixes, and last of all, the beautiful marble shape of the gods and goddesses who had held their festival on the lake island and who had called the children to this meeting. Not a word was spoken. Each stone shape came gladly and quietly into the circle of light and understanding. The children had thought to ask many questions and it had been promised that the questions should be answered. Yet now, no one spoke a word because all had come into the circle of the real magic where all things are understood without speech. Now, I will 
will be answering some questions. The first question that I would like to answer is, describe the imaginary surroundings of one of your pieces. In my cross passage, Grandpa's great escape is that both Grandpa and Jack are up in the air flying a stolen Spitfire, while two Harrier jump jets are trying to get them down on the floor. But Grandpa does not want to land the plane because he finds that being in the air is his true happiness and he feels like he lives like a slave on the ground. The second question that I would like to answer is, how do you feel your performances went? I think my performances went very well. In my play extract, my strange guinea pig, I was able to use body language to make a lively performance for the audience. In my prose passage, Grandpa's Great Escape, I was able to use vocal varieties to make a good conversation between Jack and his grandfather. In my poem, Have You Ever Met a Monster? I was able to use pauses in the appropriate places to make a dramatic effect on the character has actually seen a monster. Describe how the narrator's feelings changed. In my play extract, My Strange Guinea Pig, at first, the narrator seemed suspicious about having a guinea pig. But later on the story, he finds that there is an advantage of having a strange guinea pig. So he can make his class teacher, Miss Jenkins, do weird things like run around the classroom, laugh, scream or cry out. I hope you enjoyed my performances. Stay safe and stay well. Thank you.